Hathaway Den the last couple of days have been on fire today, slightly soft. But the question mark is whether the direct fiber business, uh, home, fiber to home business from companies like Jio and Airtel can disrupt this space. And what's happening to the broadband space as well? Let's ask the questions to Mr. S.N. Sharma uh, of 10 Networks. He joins us right now on the show. Mr. Sharma, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Let's start off with the cable business first and start off with the subscriber addition that has happened over the last 12 months and whether it can still happen materially over the next 12 months, considering that phase uh, three and phase four are almost done now. You are right, around 12 months back uh, or so, <clears throat> the main focus used to be to digitize the uh, remaining portion of the country. Let me tell you, phase 3 is already over, almost 10 months back it got finished, we wound, up, wound it up. But certain portions of phase 4 are yet to be done across the country and not just by us, by all the players. And that is very well recognized across the board and uh, it may take another, uh, I would say, six to eight months for winding up the leftover portions of phase four, that is deep rural areas. And uh, everybody is on the job and it will be done so. And uh, in the last 12 months or so, our phase three, four boxes that we have seeded is close to 5 million. Overall, we have a tall figure of 11.5 million uh, digital homes, out of which 8.5 million are paying digital homes. Okay, and so how would ARPU shape up, Mr. Sharma? I would presume that tier one and tier two ARPUs would nearly be double of what tier three and tier four would be. So how would the blended ARPUs be like? You are absolutely right. Two years back, even t Tier 1, Tier 2 used to be at a very low level of ARPUs. In Tier 1, we are drawing a ARPU of 144 rupees, which used to be 120 rupees a year back. And if you go back two years from today, it used to be in the range of 60, 70 rupees in Phase 1. Phase 2, today's ARPU is in the range of uh, 112, 113 which used to be 80, 90 rupees <clears throat> around a 12 months back. And if you go still further back uh, into the tune of two years, it used to be in the range of 50, 60 rupees. So like that, uh, phase one as, a, as of date, I would say that we are getting 50% of subscription revenue being collected by the cable operators from the ground, from the subscriber. Phase two is close to 40% to 45% of what he is collecting. Phase 3, our average ARPU today is at 76 rupees, but the average ground rate with the subscriber in Phase 3 market is also very low. It's in the range of 150 to 175 rupees. So as we move forward, the cable operators uh, of Phase 3 very well know the eventually they have to catch up with Phase 1 ARPUs and it, gradually they will be increasing their ARPUs with the subscription levels with the subscriber and accordingly the same will be shared with us. So we have a clear cut uh, ambition of taking up this 76 rupees to 144 rupees in next two years time. Like uh, I explained, phase one journey has been successful and I am quite confident the path has been set, the pitch has been laid and there is no reason that uh, this 76 doesn't move to 140 level in two, two and a half years time. 50% of our universe, our digital universe is in phase three and four. Okay, Mr. Sharma, what's the kind of growth that we can envisage as a result of the subscriber addition and the ARPU growth that you mentioned in the cable business from here on for the next two years? Neeraj, I would like to elaborate that the subscription levels in phase one have already, as I said, uh, in the range of 40 to 50 percent of what is subscriber paying. Definitely there is headroom to increase the subscription for which the talks with the broadcaster and all my peers are already on. The discussions are in active stage. There you will see a lot of changes in the bouquets, uh, in the packages that being offered to subscribers so that overall revenues can be taken it up. Now one growth would be on ARPU. Let me elaborate further that while we were seeding SD boxes, we didn't seed 
we didn't lay focus on HD. So now going forward in next 12 months, we have a target of converting 10% of our SD base into HD. The moment we are able to do that, that again gives us another, another provision of bringing in 60 to 70 rupees extra per box on HD subscriber. If SD subscriber is paying me in the range of 140, so I'll, you can easily say that after 12 months or so, in the same universe from 1 million subscriber, I should be able to get 60 to 70 rupees extra from my over and above my SD subscription. So one is uh, overall increase in the subscription rate, second is HD, third is gradual increase in number of uh, boxes going in phase four. As of now, the run rate is in the range of 40 to 50,000 boxes per month, uh, which will be there for coming five to six months. Phase four, our ARPUs, as on date while I'm talking, the Q3 reported numbers were 60, uh, 66 rupees, phase four was, phase three was 76 rupees. So definitely uh, there is sufficient uh, scope for increasing the number of boxes and accordingly the subscription going up. Your question on reported and unreported, let me highlight here. All the boxes that are activated in the field are 100% reported and we have a system wherein if a box doesn't pay us for more than three months, we knock it out of our uh, declaration and is considered as dead boxes. And we have provided for all the dead boxes that exist in our universe. So in case of DEN, I can proudly say that it's the system that has taken over like it happens in the case of telecom players where if the uh, subscriber has paid, he keeps getting the service. If subscriber doesn't pay, the service is withdrawn. Okay, let's shift focus to the broadband business. What's the kind of subscriber addition you envisage and the monthly ARPU in the broadband business over a period of the next one year? Well, we have the business plan laid out uh, with clear cut understanding that we will be operating in the range of 550 rupees ARPU uh, plus minus 50 rupees depending upon uh, situation to situation. We, knowing very well the kind of uh, stress there on the tariff. And when I am talking of 550 uh, rupees ARPU, it is for a speed of, on an average, a speed of 50 MB with unlimited data consumption. So today any telco is offering one GB a day, whereas I'm talking of unlimited data consumption. Today the average uh, speed through various telcos is not crossing nine MB. That is in the best case basis. On an average, it is in the range of five, six MB. Here I'm talking for a speed of 50 MB minimum and going up to say 60, 70. Then depending upon as the speed increases and the uh, there will be different packages and I am sure the uh, subscriber will be happy to pay for those uh, packages. So uh, the uh, tariff that we propose is quite attractive and competing, uh, suiting the environment as on date. And to for your update, the data consumption that we have seen in last couple of years has been manifold increasing. Two years back, the data consumption of our broadband subscriber on an average used to be 20 GB. Last year, we reported it in the range of 60 GB. As of now, while we are ending Q4, Q3 number was in the range of uh, 80 GB. So you can see there is explosion, I would say, courtesy uh, players like Jio, Tele, Airtel, Vodafone, all these players in their Warfare have uh, enabled a sort of uh, data explosions and we are uh, consciously aware that's why we are talking of unlimited data at a higher speed. Then definitely we'll be re having a relook and redefining the whole process depending upon how, we, how the environment thoughts up. When it comes to subscriber addition, as of now, we have 2 lakh subscribers in city of Delhi primarily, a few thousand in Kanpur. 
our arpos in city of delhi is uh, dropped down due to various uh, obvious reasons and as i explained tariff uh, stress on the tariff it's in the range of 600 rupees whereas kanpur the arpos still are in the range of 800 rupees and uh, going further in a year's time in 2 to 3 years time rather we plan to increase the subscriber base by another 6 lakh subscribers so overall after 3 years you can say our subscriber base should be 8 lakhs final question mr uh, sharma what about capex and debt levels for then see as far as capex is concerned uh, cable doesn't need any capex it's all done it's now an empty business uh, and year on year the subscription growth and whatsoever increase in our pools that we are going to bring in there is no subsidy on the boxes hd boxes that are being seeded are being sold at on cost to cost basis we are not extending any subsidy entire money is being recovered up front from the subscriber only then the box goes out of the system so cable doesn't need any capex and for the broadband plan since we have already fibrized our infrastructure the infrastructure is already in place not much of capex would be needed to uh, roll out this broadband plan that i have elaborated i am talking to the tune of 100 to 120 crores in the next 3 years first year would not be needing more than 30 to 40 crore of capex for rolling out this kind of broadband plan limited to our network okay uh, we we'll that all will be managed through internal accruals i need not raise any money for that it's good to know all the best mr shama thanks so much for taking the time out and giving us that perspective that's then networks optimistic on both the sides of the business mm -hmm.